Hello, this is Kevin Myers with the TJ Snow Company. Today we're going to be unboxing and hooking up a Tecna self-portable hanging gun and spring balancer. And now I'm going to start the unboxing and showing as we unbox all the loose items. Instruction manual with various manual parts to help develop weld schedules and gun adjustments. A sort of tool kit that has various clamps, extra screws, a small tool for removing electrodes and such. The air regulator and moisture filter assembly, it has to be installed. The J bar actually holds the gun. The extra handle for right or left handed operators. And now we're going to start the unboxing of the gun and GFI assembly. First we have the GFI assembly that's ample size and power. We have roughly 25 feet of air and electrical cables. Just need to lay this off to the side for now. And here's where we actually pull the gun out of the box. Need some sort of a jib crane, a chain, or a strap. The gun is roughly 145 pounds, so two people could have easily pick it up by themselves. And it's easier if you just set the gun all the way to the ground so we can do the final assembly. Now we're going to install the J-bar assembly to the bell frame of the gun. You'll notice I'm working off the floor just because it's, I've come to find out through the years it's easier this way. What you'll find is you have a jam nut internally. You need to remove that. And this large nut, remove it as well. You'll see this washer that is two-sided. You have a, a flange side and a protrusion in the very center. This protrusion actually makes contact with the bearing internally, so the gun will be able to spin and pivot freely. Then you have the J-bar support pin. The J-bar support pin goes inside of the notch inside the frame. We'll install the washer with the flange side facing the bell frame, like this. Now you'll notice the nut also is two-sided. The same corresponding shoulder pushes against the bearing on this side. To start with, you want to have the nut just making contact. You'll notice the J-bar actually lines up and just insert the nut just to start with for now. You want to have the nut loose enough to where you can actually slide it along the notch. If it's too tight, you won't be able to slide it for the rough adjustment so your gun will pivot and be balanced when it's sitting there. Inside the box, where the balancer is, is provided a safety cable. For the sake of time, we're not going to install this today because we're just using it for demonstration. When you get the machine to your plant and the whole system will be set up, this loop will be loosened up and going through here through the frame of the balancer. And this will actually bypass separately the main operational hook. In case the event, something fails, the hook fails, the gun assembly will not hurt anyone and fall. This will be hooked like so through the loop to the main support in the building structure itself on the jib crane or whatever you may have to hold. Now we'll lay out the spring balancer assembly. Now you understand why it's easier to work off the floor than on a table. There is a pin that's provided in the swivel connection right here. And it's much easier to remove the pin so you can make the hookup from the assembly on the J-bar. Search your cotter pin appropriate size tool to spread the edges. And go mid over like so. And now we're ready to hook our main building support chain to the hook itself. Mm -hmm. 
As you're raising the gun assembly up, you'll notice things. Make sure there's no binding, no jamming. Everything should move freely. Making sure to avoid the hand-operated locking device chain. It's easy to get this in the bind. We'll continue to make lifting of the gun, as so. And you'll notice also as well, the J-bar assembly is too far forward so it'll pick up the gun very nose heavy. So we need to set the gun back to the floor to get the weight off of the J-bar support. And depending on the arm length, we'll also determine the rough balance of this. You can use your hand to snug up the nut for now. Take an appropriate sized nut wrench and just snug the nut so the gun wasn't, won't move on you. And continue raising the assembly up to the height just desired. And at this point, we're gonna use our Allen wrench that's provided in the toolkit so we can use it to adjust and set the clamping force on our arm holders. And here this would be a particular brand of holder or length of holder or type that you would decide. I just grabbed the two that we need for today. These holders can go in the top or bottom depending on the application that you're needing. You'll notice this one's straight where it's designed just for one short style electrode. This one has an adjustable holder that you can adjust it in or out depending on the needs you have. So today we're going to put this in the top. And we'll use our wrench, my Allen wrench. You don't want to tighten these permanently just yet because as you can see, they still need to move. All right, we'll do a test balance and see how the gun balances on its own. Very well. And depending on the uh, position you need to have the gun, the J-bar, there is an external holder for left or right-handed, depending on what your needs are. On the front of the top of the gun, you have a tapped hole here on both sides. So if you need to put the, the handle here for support, you can. You can also turn the gun over, have the J-bar on the other side, and have the holder here. So for today, we're gonna put it on this side. Again, it just screws in there and it's only hand tight. That's, that's perfectly tight right there. And you can tell you have plenty of movement up and down and around. And if you want the machine to stay put in a certain way, you can lock the bell screw and it won't spin anymore. But you still have free adjustment from the J-bar support bearing that's in here. Once you've determined that everything is set like you want, the balance is, is adequate, you would actually want to take your wrench and tighten this nut properly and also the jam nut on the end. I think it's a 17 millimeter. You tighten that nut down and it's a lock nut so there won't be anything to come off. There are additional steps that are required before you are ready to weld. On the end of the pigtail provided with the Technogun, you'll see three hoses. One of the hoses is air pressure that will be hooked to the building supply. The other hose is for your water in from your chiller. The third hose is the water out of the gun back to the chiller. You'll notice a GF5 connection box on the end of the pigtail as well. You'll see one large SO cord with three wires. One wire is for ground. The other two wires are for single phase AC 480 power. At the end of the upper and lower arms, you'll see where your lower and upper electrodes should be installed for whatever application that you are doing. Once your power and air circuits are completely hooked up and you're confident that they're correct, Make sure that the e-stop button on the back of the gun is pulled out. Turn your main power from the building to the machine on, 
Then turn the GFI switch that is located inside the enclosure. You're now ready to start developing your weld schedule for your current parts. See our other how-to videos for proper weld schedule development. And that concludes the basic setup of a spring balancer and portable gun assembly. For more information about these type guns and others, look us up on the web at tjsnow.com.